Ah, yes. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from lovely San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Karen Boxman, who is actually also in San Diego down the road. How are you doing, Karen? Oh, man, I'm telling you what, beautiful day. Awesome. It's a, Love San Diego. Uh, and so Karen is an international speaker, success author, and neurohumorist. This is I love this, living at the intersection of the brain and humor. So yes. not only does she live downtown San Diego, she also lives at the intersection of brain and humor. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, crowded here. It's crowded. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen's a pioneer of the, of the, in the field of applied humor. You actually did a master's thesis in graduate school, and now you yes. work in partnership with neuroscientists, and then you help organizations and people to peak performance through art the art and science of yes. applied humor. So what we want to talk about is, okay, so I've talked with lots of people about strategic this, strategic that, right? Never about strategic humor to grow your sales. So Karen, right? let's go. What is strategic humor? It's humor that is used intentionally for a desired outcome. And the insight here is that people think that the purpose of humor is entertainment. And that's mm -hmm. true. But that's only one of the three purposes. The two other purposes are influence and well-being. And for people who are high performers in sales, many of them have a sense of humor and they can be funny. And they even recognize that it can be helpful, but they've not thought about how they can implement it intentionally and consistently. And that's what we talk about when we talk about strategic humor and high performance mm -hmm. humor. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, a lot of times when uh, when people engage with someone, they sometimes use humor as a as a defense mechanism, right. as, as an as an icebreaker, or and sometimes you can sometimes it works and sometimes it's awkward or whatever. But I don't think very many <laughs> people <laughs> approach it in a strategic fashion. <clears throat> right. Right. You know, and when I'm, I'm interviewing people, I have a book coming out this fall, as you and I had talked mm -hmm. about with yeah. Forbes books. And I have interviewed many, many high performers, particularly in sales. And they are the ones who have thought about this process. And before they show up, they, they are thinking about, you know, how can I use different kinds of tools so that I can have that other person leaning in. And this is where I got to tell you, this is where I geek out on the combination of humor in the brain. This is something right. that is really very cutting edge. And through the work of people like David Rock, who wrote a great book called um, Your Brain at Work. And he's uh, the founder of the Neuro Leadership Institute. Uh, what we know is that when the brain goes into a threat state, um, in other words, that's kind of the person leaning away. It's them putting up their guard, putting up resistance. Um, when they're in a threat state, they are not hearing you um, to the degree that you want to be heard. They're not um, connecting with you. Uh, they may not even like you. They've got other kinds of things going on in their mind. And so that really puts up a barrier to the sales process. What can you do to help that brain state become a towards state because mm -hmm. when in the, when it's in an away state, now we have adrenaline going up and norepinephrine going up and dopamine <laughs> and oxytocin going down and all of these other things was like this little cascade of neurotransmitters that are working against you. But the cool thing about humor is that we now know scientifically that when somebody is engaged in humor and it's a positive kind of humor, mm -hmm. not an aggressive humor, yeah. but now we are seeing an increase in dopamine, a decrease in epinephrine and norepinephrine and an increase in oxytocin, which is that bonding hormone. And so now you have the other person, you know, their brain is leaning in towards you and you know, it, it makes you more likable. I know that, mm -hmm. you know, who listening to this has not read, you know, Robert Cialdini's book on influence and persuasion. Mm -hmm. Number one thing being likability, you know, people would rather do business with yeah. all things being equal with somebody that they like or somebody that they perceive as fun and positive. And again, this is one of the many things that humor can do for you when you think about using it intentionally. Yeah. And I think it was a couple of things you touched on there. I think it's is, is really fascinating for people is, OK, um, as you said, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on when you're trying to communicate to somebody. And nowadays, it's even more so because 
as I as I say ad nauseum now, we're not the busiest we've ever been. We're the most distracted we've ever been. There we you just go. decided to <laughs> replace distracted with busy to pretend it's busy. But so people are so just <laughs> dis, so distracted, right? And there's so much going on that it's really hard to cut through that noise. But as you say, one of the ways you can do that, I mean, you've you've obviously taught this for a long time and studied it and, and helped people with it. How often do you see that kind of clutter fall away when somebody suddenly goes, oh, that's quite funny, actually. And then and suddenly they're, you know, and suddenly all of this other stuff that was going on in their brain has been cast aside because they've, because it is such a, I don't know, I was going to say a primal, but in a good way kind of connection. Isn't yes. It? And again, you know, this is all at the subconscious level. But yeah. we know that logic tells emotion sells. But how do you tap into that emotion? You know, you can scare the person to death or you can frighten <laughs> yeah. them or, or, you know, try to bully them or whatever that may mm -hmm. be. You know, but humor is one of those shortcuts to the emotional process. And so you are tapping into the emotions and, and again, decreasing that resistance. Um, and at the same time, improving your... Um, your capacity in terms of brain capacity. And so it, it does tend to have that other stuff that, you know, when you say the term fall away, I think of in terms of like that resistance <laughs> falling yeah. away. And as long as the humor is on target and is used appropriately, then you're going to see that fall away. The issue is that some people, no, I'm going to say most people <laughs> don't really understand all the things that come into play to make humor really work for you. Right. Really right. work. It gets, it, you know, it does get a little complex and I, I, and I'm throwing a lot of things out yeah. here. Well, because I was going to, I was going to ask you about that. Right. So, okay. So we know it works when it works. Right. Um, but we also know that not everybody is number one, naturally, funny or witty right. or whatever and sometimes people you know try to be funny but they just come off as awkward or okay. it's inappropriate yeah. at the moment or it's or it's basically not funny which then makes the situation more awkward because then you have to do that kind of <laughs> which uh, right. you know put, right. makes you feel more defensive because you're just thinking now I just I just showed that I didn't really think that was funny and now we're it's even right. more awkward so how do you how do you advise people on how on the on the type of humor how to do it how to do it if you're not if this isn't something that you're naturally good at well you know there are several pushbacks whether those are conscious or unconscious and one of them is but what if i'm not funny <laughs> you know and when people say that to me my response is great <laughs> because <laughs> you know the pressure is off what i yeah. have discovered over years and years of research is that high performers understand they don't have to be funny they need mm -hmm. to see funny. They don't have to be the initiator. They need to right. be the appreciator. And so take the pressure off for one thing, you know, and there's, mm -hmm. there's many ways that you can leverage humor without ever having to tell a joke yourself. I don't advise telling jokes unless yeah. you are really, really good at it. <laughs> um, yeah. and so, so again, that's an interesting, so that's important. Yeah, so let's explore that because, as you say, I think it's just taking the pressure off anybody who's watching this who's thinking, oh, my goodness, I have to turn into a stand-up <laughs> comedian. I have to write right. jokes the night before and arrive, burst into the room um, and capture those. So what are some of those ways, as you said, you can see funny or you can highlight something or you can just bring that up without you yes. actually being the initiator? Yes. Um, anecdotes, stories, um, pulling stories from another person. Um, these are ways that I, I really like because mm -hmm. what is most personal is most universal. Yes. And when you can start finding stories, um, I coach a lot of high performers. And, and one of the things that I became aware of was, you know, a lot of them were saying, oh, you know, I need to be funnier or teach me how to be funny or I want to <laughs> be funny. Um, just, you know, improv or whenever. The, and, <laughs> and I said, you know, I can make you funny. I can, I can write you a funny script, but if you... Yeah. If you don't know when to use it or where that opening is and how to use it appropriately, you know, again, awkward. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, one of the great things about sales is so much of that, it's more about 
listening and asking the yeah. right questions. Yeah. And as you're asking these questions to really have that filter on, and again, this is a brain process, your reticular mm-hmm. activating system. When you have that filter to be listening for these little openings of any kind of a funny comment that they make, that's your cue. How can you leverage yeah. that? How can you build off of that? Um, another yeah. piece of advice that I was uh, coaching a gentleman on the other day in sales, because he's not a funny person, but he showed me a sales presentation that he did. And he was talking about something and he threw out a comment and somebody from the audience threw him a line that made everybody mm-hmm. laugh. Right, he right. Said, oh, okay, this is golden for you. You know, mm-hmm. it's like called lather, rinse, repeat. Okay, yeah. that was a funny line. Next time you do this presentation, because you do this presentation a lot, now you get to borrow that person and, and line and use it for yourself. Yeah. And you can either refer to the other person or for God's sake, just steal it. Use it. Yeah, yeah, it. exactly. That's now your yes. line. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like you call it creative appropriation. Right, right. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, and so that's, that's one of the, it's really a tool about listening and, and leveraging. You know, there's, there's, um, in terms of visuals in your presentations, you know, if you're, you know, I don't know, using PowerPoint or something, there's mm-hmm. all kinds of visuals that you can use. People who keep, you know, things of interest on their desk, you know, it might be a, yeah. a picture of something that's interesting or kind of funny. And to have one or two things that you can work into a conversation, this is what I call planned spontaneity. Right, and yeah. so it's a line that you can use you know, I, and I'll just give you one quick one. So it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm meeting somebody and we're sitting down and we're going to have a discussion to see if we're a good fit. And I'll ask how they are and they'll say, how are you? And my, my response is, you know, if I were any better, I'd be you. And, right, right. you know, it kind of <laughs> takes them back, but they start to chuckle. I know yeah. that brain wise, the resistance just came down a little bit. And so leveraging that, you know, different kinds of humor without you ever having to be funny mm-hmm. is really easy once you get into it. Yeah, and I like that concept too that you said about when you're having conversations, you know, with a prospect or a customer or whatever, and you're listening. And especially because when somebody starts to tell you about the issues they were having, or they tried to a project last year didn't it didn't work well, you know, there's some more stories there, and you yeah. know that probably from this looking at it from this distance now, there's probably ones that they'll be oh, and you wouldn't believe what they did and that. And there's suddenly this humor in that and you've you've made that person tell the funny story, right? Yes. You. And here's an interesting thing that again, this this wasn't my own initial insight. Mm-hmm. I, I learned this from my son. It's amazing that right. we can learn, you know, <laughs> our children are our best teachers. He actually studied with Second City. And okay. Yeah. And so, and he was a starving artist. I, mm-hmm. I go to visit him in Chicago and, you know, I open the refrigerator in his apartment and there is bread and ranch dressing. I was like, yeah. yeah. Where, where food is, is food is hard to improv. You know, yeah. that's, a, that's a tough one said, to improv. <laughs> he was eating ranch dressing sandwiches. So I take mm. him out to eat and while he's golfing down food, I said, you know, just in case this, this, you know, second city thing doesn't work out, you know, is there a way that you're going to be able to apply this in, mm-hmm. in your life in other ways? And he was supporting himself by being a waiter at the time. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, mom, I've always gotten better tips than my counterparts because I'm funny. He said, mm-hmm. but when I started improv, he said, you know, one of the rules of improv is that you never put the focus on yourself. You never try to be yeah, the yeah. funniest one. You're always, you know, by everybody trying to make the rest of the team look funny, it raises, you know, all boats mm-hmm. in the tide. And he said, so I started looking at my tables as part of my troop. And what I realized was that every table, there was somebody who thought they were funny too. Mm-hmm. He said, Mom, when I'm funny, I get really good tips, but when I can make them look funnier than me, I get amazing tips. Yeah, uh, How cool is that? That is really, really cool. Cause it really does play into it. Play into, it plays into that kind of idea of, you know, the rule of communications that people believe conclusions they come to themselves over anything you can tell them. Right. So your job is to help them come to that conclusion. So in your son's case, his job is just to convince them. Yeah, you are a really, really funny person. And who doesn't like to feel like that? 
Exactly. I mean, that, that is like one of the ultimate mm. compliments to tell somebody yeah. that they're funny. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, quite frankly, whether you're looking for a leader or a lover, one of the top three things people <laughs> looking for is sense of humor, you know, yeah. make me laugh. And so even if they're not that funny to just go, oh, my yeah. gosh, you are funny. They're going to be thinking yeah. <laughs> now how you put the brain in a really torn state there and, yeah. and they're going to love this conversation with you. And I think part of uh, also, I think why this is a, a kind of a timely message as well in many ways is, I mean, let's face it, I mean, we live in the number one, we live in a pretty angry messed up world today and people seem to love to engage in the opposite of laughter this idea of recreational anger where people just seem to want to <laughs> angry, angry all the time I, I, anger. I, am, I, I, that. I appropriated that from someone that's because I just thought term. that's exactly what I was th- what I've been thinking so people are you know guys that and and there's all these pressures at work and people are angry outside of work and all this stuff's going on that bringing a little, lightening things up a little. I mean, this is such a perfect time to introduce that. Because I say like today, there's a couple of things like being polite will make you stand out, which is an unfortunate thing, but it's yes. true. It's unfortunate yes. state of the world. I think being lighter and, you know, uh, and, and, creating the environment for a nice, happy engagement with someone is going to stand out. So I think the timing yes. of this is is perfect. Yes. And humor, like you said earlier, it can be a tool or it can be a weapon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, over the past few years, we've really seen it weaponized. Yeah. But if you are in a position in sales, you're not trying to weaponize here. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you want to be building these relationships. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the beautiful things about humor is that it can very quickly bond you with other people and and to, you know, so so why not use it? And why not use it intentionally and consistently? Because the more you do that, again, not only are you rewiring your brain, but you're definitely going to see a difference whether you're doing presentations, whether you're, you know, wherever you are in the sales process. That can, I mean, I, I put humor in my contracts, my closing contracts, you know, it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, just to see how, how closely they're reading, you know, but yeah. when people send the contract back, you know, they say, you know, oh, you know, great contract. It's all signed. I don't know if I can really supply the cabana boy to serve you chocolates yeah. in your room, but yeah. we got everything else covered. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, so there's yeah. a laugh. So, mm-hmm. so take advantage of that. Yeah, no, and I think people are, I think people would be very, very open to it because they're not getting enough. They're not getting enough kind of just, you know, warm laughter. One thing before we finish, though, because, um, sure. you know, I, w- I was reading and watching some of your stuff and, I, and you were talking about doing that uh, big presentation in Asia, right? Where yes. everybody told you, don't, don't tell any jokes, it's your bomb. Yeah? And you did, and it all worked out. But from, um, how is it, how can people prepare themselves uh, if they have, you know, for being careful about humor across cultures and all of that kind of stuff? Is there, is there a kind of a safe zone that you can, that pretty much plays everywhere? Or do you have to really figure out the culture? Um, you know, it really does help to know the culture and mm-hmm. I didn't tell any jokes. What I did, and I took out all the um, wordplay. Yeah. I took out cultural references, and mm-hmm. I loaded the presentation with funny personal stories. Because right. again, what is most personal mm-hmm. is most universal. Yeah. And and you know, a lot of people preparing me for this said, "Don't panic when nobody laughs." Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm ready to talk to a vacuum. But these people, I mean, I've got pictures of them wiping their eyes. So either they mm-hmm. really connected with those personal stories or the translator was going, laugh hard now, she say something funny. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, I, I, what I get from it, though, is because people are connecting. And I think I, I shared yes. with you that even three days later, a gentleman came up to me and tapped me on yeah. the shoulder and said, you know, funny mean money which is the name, you know, that's the, the yeah. book, the title that's coming up because it was so memorable to them and it made such an impact. Um, you know, one of the things that if, if your listeners and, and viewers mm-hmm. are more interested in this, um, I'll give you the link um, where they can download a sample of what's coming out in the book this yes. fall because I do identify seven important building blocks. And again, when you understand these, grasp these and apply these, you're going to crush it. But mm-hmm. when you miss one and, and miss it, you know, 
big time. You know, for instance, one of the first, very first building block is bond. It's that relationship between yeah, you yeah. and the other person. And so many people assume they have a better relationship than what they really do. They like, oh man, mm -hmm. you know, he, he likes the Rams. I like the Rams. So he's yeah. going to love this joke on, yeah. you know, this political party thing. And it's like blows up in their face. So, yeah. you know, if people go to humorforme.com, they can download a simple a sample of the, uh, the upcoming book that's coming out with Forbes this fall. Book. Yeah, and I think that's a and I and I think that's a great uh, one to end up just to underline that that one though about um, assuming too much because that's what I advise people nowadays is you're not going to you're not going to get penalized for being too polite you're not going to even get penalized for being too formal because you know something um, people are getting sick of this over over familiarity from the get go. It's like, I've never met, I've never met you. I've never written to you before, but I'm going to go, hey, hey, John, how's it going? And all this. And it's just like, come on, you know, let me, right. at least give me, at least let me have, give me the courtesy of giving you permission to do that. Yes. <laughs> yes. You are spot on with that one. Yeah. Um, so before we go, tell us a little bit more about the book um, when it's uh, released. I presume it'll be available on all the all the usual channels and we'll have it in, the, the, in the bio channels. and description. You'll be able to thank link to you. it and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I am so excited because this really is cutting edge material. I've been a pioneer in the field of applied humor for the past 30 years. And this content is content that has been pulled together um, just in the last 15 months and um, very heavy emphasis on how you can use humor strategically for influence. Um, the title is actually Funny Means Money, Strategic mm -hmm. Humor for Influence and World Domination. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, it'll be coming out this fall. And again, it, it, if we are, we're putting in the tools, the processes, assessments. Um, you know, I studied humor for 30 years so that you don't have to. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it was E.B. White said that humor can be dissected as a frog can, but the thing dies in the process and is a interest to only the pure scientists and right. so um no frogs were harmed in this presentation. <laughs> but um but yeah i've just dissected it to the point where everybody else would just go okay that's more than enough tmi <laughs> Ah, uh, fantastic. All right. Well, hopefully uh, you'll come back when the book is released and we'll talk a little more. Love to. But it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, again, uh, the book is Funny Means Money, right? I'm correct. Funny that's Means right. Money. See, that's such a great title. Nobody can forget that. And Karen <laughs> Buxton. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeline Sierra. And thanks again, Karen. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, John.